Yeah, so I called Bumi, and Bumi was like, eh, what the fuck about this is this? This guy. You worked with RMD for 13 months. A year, 13 months, yes. You you spent a year on the film. Initially, it was not your decision to direct the film, but then no one was willing to stay on the project for that long. So how did you combine all the roles of being a co-writer, producer, director, and literally having your eyes everywhere? You feel it coming, just sit down, and everyone just chill away for you. Bombastic side eye. Going from there straight to production, it was hard. Though the sheer will to continue, it, it was hard. They talk about the actors, they talk about the crew, talk about everything but the investors. So we did all of that stuff, and we're finally ready on the day off. The generator has arrived. Everything is good. We're like, we pull off the biggest logistic like in in Hollywood history. We've done it. <laughs> Where are the actors? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me the proof. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name as usual is Alice Johnson and as you know this channel is dedicated to African content and you know just getting into the nitty gritties of film, theatre and the likes. Today is no exception, I have with me here Mr. Editi F. Young and he is a filmmaker, tech entrepreneur, you know, the whole works. I'm not going to talk too much. Let's hear his bio and get back into the interview. Editi F. Young is a creative entrepreneur with business interests in advertising, technology, and film. He's the founder of Anaco, one of Nigeria's biggest digital marketing agencies, and Anaco Labs, a technology company focused on building solutions for financial services and telecom industries. In 2018, Editi founded Anaco Films, a company dedicated to telling the next generation of African stories through film. Anaco Films' first two releases, Up North and The Setup, have since been acquired by Netflix. Anaco Films also partnered with the U.S. Mission in Nigeria and the U.S. Justice Department to create Fishbone, a film aimed at raising awareness for pharmaceutical drugs counterfeiting. Editi's first feature film as a director, The Black Book, has been called Nollywood's biggest film production yet by CNN. The Black Book is scheduled for release on the 22nd of September 2023. Okay, so you've heard it all. You've heard all the accolades about my guest today. I'm going to allow him to do all the talking. He's going to be telling us about the film that is coming out. We are anticipating on the 22nd of September, The Black Book. Guys, I've been seeing a lot of posts, a lot of videos, a lot of, you know, there's just been a lot of buzz around this film and we have the director here today so thank you for joining us today Editi. thank you thank you thank you for having me all right so let's get straight into it before we get into the black book or talk about the black book just uh, maybe a short journey into being called a creative entrepreneur who has um you know your hands in technology advertising and film Tell me which one came in which order and how do we find ourselves here, you know, interviewing you as a filmmaker? Okay, uh, this is actually really cool. Um, I grew up in a library. That's the first thing. And when I, my dad has a master's degree in linguistics. And so I grew up in a house full of books. He had like all kinds of books, fiction, non-fiction, mostly fiction. Um, and so I read the African Writers series maybe when I was 12 years old. Everything. Mm -hmm. Things fall apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Great Pond. Actually, my, The Great Pond is my favorite from, from the African Writers series. And the Caribbean Writers series, The Mystic Masseur, is mm -hmm. my favorite, you know. So, and then there was Born in Grass. Born in Grass was off, or Doris Lesson. It was really good. I love, I love, um, but I love the storytelling style of mostly the, the Igbo writers. Mm. Um, and then the great ponds. I love Igbo stories and the great ponds, the concubine. Um, obviously, Things Fall Apart stands out on its own because Things Fall Apart was written in English, but it really is Igbo. Mm. You know? <laughs> when you read it, it reads as Igbo, but it's written in English. It's it's fantastic. It's it's and I learned those things like growing up reading reading in my dad's library. I read I read everything there was, and so you can imagine reading things from apart as a twelve year old, and then having to read again as a fifteen year old, and then mm -hmm. as an adult. 
couple of times and and every time i've read it i've learned a, a different thing i've seen a different thing mm-hmm. but that was the that was the life i grew up in i grew up reading everything mm-hmm. now second thing is that i grew up in a family of really talented people i could play instruments my brother could build elect- electric cars uh, back then or build a drum sets things like that and and build the mechanics of them and then i couldn't do those things naturally they could play musical in- instruments i couldn't play any musical instruments i, I didn't have any musical bone in my body mm. um like like they were really talented people and you know how you grow up around these talented people and i always feel like what life is you you know and but then i realized that when my brother finished building his drum set i could go take it apart and put it back together mm. um and I will watch him closely enough. I could do everything with that. Hmm. Or if I listen to them playing the keyboard, I'll go and play everything they did just the way they did. You know, even though I did not have the natural aptitude for it. Hmm. And that's why I, 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 and then I was now this person who reads a lot. I realized that my actual natural talent was learning. I could learn things very easily. I could solve problems very easily. Hmm. Uh, which leads to the fact that I, I ended up you know teaching myself how to code to use a computer and then how to code how to design i was self taught and basically built a company out of that when i was 17 i started building this web design company and then you know went deeper eventually got into got into oil got into marketing and moved to lagos for marketing and then i built a company marketing company after 2 years as a products product manager So that's a short form of that journey. Um you know and and I'm finding that be, being a film director this, the, the biggest thing I have transferred in terms of all my other careers is programming. Like being a programmer and being a film director has felt the same for me. You know. Um because uh being a, a programmer back then like you have to be able to design you have to be able to code you have to be able to like build front end and back end and you're carrying every single line of code in your head you know where everything is mm. a few days ago i went back to look in the folder since i still work in tech and sometimes i reuse code i went to look in the folder of code i wrote 18 years ago and i knew exactly where everything was <laughs> wow yeah and and i found that being a film director that's the same thing you have to know the story where everything is when someone says we have to move this line of dialogue you know exactly how it affects the entire story down downstream mm. you know so it it for me is that where everything everything connects but i i feel like the thing that's made me most comfortable directing film is having been a programmer i mean sort of like set my head up to be able to process huge amounts of information mm. and complex data um being a programmer working in tech means you have to learn data and mm. to learn to manipulate data um i became a much better mathematician and and a person who like i love physics i got better at maths learning physics i got better at physics learning programming wow interesting yeah Yeah so I yeah that so that's the journey I'm as much a scientist as I'm an artist mm. you know I started writing when I was 10 and a lot of the writing was from my experiences in in science and and because I know from advertising you get to deal with so many different companies and I I always immerse myself in the products you know I I I was also involved in the tech side like mostly financial services from the concept of a product the financial services product from mm-hmm. concept to design build the programming of it to sell I was in, involved in the entire life cycle the entire cycle of of projects yeah so when you're now writing it's easier to write because you you understand so many different things you're writing about the law or you're writing about you know crime I can I can spin I can spin crime in fantastical ways you know because I understand I've I've spent a lot of time talking to fraud uh managers in banks because mm. they're trying to design a campaign you know to improve uh customer education by fraud 
Mm-hmm. And so, and so, in writing about fraud, in writing about Yahoo Boys, I understand this very clearly. Mm. You know, what an interesting journey. You no, know, you, your answer right now has explained a lot of things, but I would still like to get into that. So, it's talking about speaking to a lot of these um, crime investigators and. I think it influences your work. So let, let's talk about Fishbone for now. The first short film that you directed. Um, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of semblances from what you've said to the film. And then also Black Book that is also coming out um, very soon. So tell us about what inspires you as a filmmaker. And let's talk briefly about the making of Fishbone. Fishbone, yeah. <laughs> Before Black Book became my favorite thing, Fishbone was my favorite thing. And Fishbone has like this place in my heart. You know, um, let's say, okay, so for up north, I, I had started traveling in the north of Nigeria. I'm, I'm from the south and we often do not understand people from the north. Mm. And Westerners come in and talk about the, the north-south divide, the Christian-Muslim divide in Nigeria. Mm. But I, as a Nigerian, hadn't spent a lot of time in the north and the Northerners didn't spend a lot, as much time in the south. So we don't understand each other as much. So I'm like, no, I'm going to just travel this country and understand mm. More, I want to understand more of the country, and I did. The thing there, I came away with the, the the philosophy that has guided my life as a Nigerian ever since. People are just people. The Northerners have the same problems and the Southerners. All of us have the same problem. We just trying to survive, man. Mm. You know, and it, and then the North is also really beautiful very. in the way that I like. It's very beautiful. Yes. And I'm like, come on, man. We, we need to, man, people need to see this country. Mm. Ah, ah, people need to. See. And so I started, I was in the middle of Zamfara, you know, mm. in a place with a, a beach, like a desert beach in the middle of nowhere. There was a lot of sand by a river, but like, like meters and meters of what we qualify as beach in Boko and Zamfara, the most conservative state in the country. Mm. In Nigeria, you say Zamfara, the average Zamfara is like, no, I'm not going there. But it was the most beautiful place I've ever seen in Nigeria. And that's when I met this old woman. We were looking for water because we ran out of of water. And she offered us food. And I could tell this is the only food this woman has, but she offered this to us. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I've got to write about this place. And that's when I started writing a story about a southerner from my small tribe, rich kid coming to the north for NYSC because it's the only thing that would bring him there and he wants to leave immediately but then falls in love with the north and spends time and becomes a member of the community that's that's how up north was formed it was from Paul I, mm. this is what I wanted to do with the story and it came at a time where I had started thinking yes I think I'm ready to do this thing that I always wanted to do because back as a young person when I wrote I write very descriptive prose and mm. so everyone told me when they read the things i write they could see it but that's because i was writing it from a a box i was seeing what i write i i, I think in pictures and i mm. was writing the pictures and so i always wanted to make film and finally i'd gone to a place where i'm like i think i can afford to make film i've seen people make film mm. and then talk to them and it seemed like it seemed like something that i could do and influenced lastly by Wedding Party. Mm. And Mora Budu was talking about the making of Wedding Party and 50. And I was just like, I can't do this. You know, so that was how Up North came to the end. And shout out to my partners then, uh, Inkblot, Zulu and Naz. So I I started because like, I initially Naz and Zulu, I met Naz first and then Zulu. But Zulu was actually the person who said this film has to be made. You know, so I always say in these interviews that I owe my film career to Zulu. Zulu was the person who said this film has to be made. And this, look, I woke up one morning and I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it starts from somewhere. Yeah. It, it starts from yeah. somewhere. And so there, there is Up North. But mm-hmm. Fishbone was interesting that the script for Fishbone was written in 30 minutes. No way. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm just going to chip when I if you are watching this and you've not seen Fishbone, I'll definitely link it in the description box. So go click and watch the film and you are going to see the amazing film that was written in just 30 minutes. Please go ahead. <laughs> uh, it was it was um I think partly because of my my life history. I grew up very poor. 
Mm. You know, I grew up in very small communities. I've I've done the spectrum. You know, I have worked at the highest level in my country. I've worked with, you know, global CEOs and worked with presidents of countries. And when I tell people I come from, come from the bottom, they're like, nah. But this <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but it's it's that. So I can relate to that the community there. And I had gone to that community to shoot a bank ad. It was the first time like a, like banks tend to have very polished ads. Mm-hmm. And I told my clients, no, we are doing this. We we're going to the grassroots to do this. And it became the most successful campaign for the bank at the time, mm-hmm. uh, going to that local community. And so I'd seen this, I'd touched this community and it's the tangibleness of poverty. You know, it feels like it could, yes. And there's a photo, you know, of a kid. Mm-hmm. It was so emblematic of what that community was. You know, as a kid in black, dirty water. It's not, not dirty, it's black, mm-hmm. right? And he had his hand out. And that's when I decided I'm going to write about this place. And this thing had sat in my head. It was in my head for, for about a year. And then we're having a conversation with the a rep from the U.S. Um, Justice Department, and they're like they're looking for a, a story that does this. Mm. I don't know why they asked me. But I'm like, okay, I know exactly what story you want. Mm. And the way kind of my head works is that I I I walk through this story and found it in my head. Mm. And so I just grabbed my laptop, opened the script thing. 30 minutes later, I looked at it, and the film was done. Wow. I know it was it was addressing, you know, the counterfeit drugs, and I'm not going to give spoilers. So if you're watching this and you're hoping for a spoiler, go and watch it. It's linked in the description box. But yeah, basically, it's, it's, it's talking about counterfeit drugs, but then it doesn't lose its essence when the discussion happens at the end of the film, and we are speaking about piracy. Yeah, I, as much as I personally don't agree with the severity of the two films, I do also know that creatives, we've had so many times when creatives who have given their lives to the industry or dying, and people are out there saying, oh, we have to raise money for medical treatments. And ultimately, creatives should be able to have pension and mm. life savings, but they can't because they're living projects to projects to projects. And I do see how piracy is, is playing a role in that. Absolutely. So it's it's an important enough subject, and I think it deserves a film of its own. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't possible at the time, so I'm glad that that conversation was had. I do wish it was had on its own platform. So Fishbone is a really great movie. It has Shafi Bello, Daniel Etimef Young, and I would really encourage anyone watching this to definitely watch the film. But before we continue with the interview, just a quick one. I want to know if you are in any way related with Daniel Etimef Young. Fun thing, I met them right in the film for the first time when we're doing the read of this one. Oh, okay. Then <laughs> And then I had I had heard this question in all kinds of forms. And Daniel had in a smaller capacity had heard this question. Yeah. And eventually we agreed that we are cousins. <laughs> are you related to Daniel Timmy Fiong? Yes, he's my cousin. Yes. It's I call him cousin now, so he's my cousin. Let's <laughs> let's get into the black book. I've seen the buzz, I've seen the posts, and then I've been reading some of them, the posts that you've also been sharing. Um, I really love that you put out posts about the journey, the BTS, and all of that. But first of all, what inspired the making of this film? You know, the blockbuster that we have all been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think I ever go out and say, I want to make this film that is like, oh my God, you know, I, I never do that. I, I just, I just want to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And so I remember the first person I spoke to about the Black Book, and it was always called the Black Book. I don't know why it was called the Black Book. It's just, it's a name that's stuck in my head. But I spoke to Mimi Bartels and that this is the story I want to make. And I wanted to make like a small story about the father responding to some being killed by certain people. And I remember the story, like the, the picture I had in my head. That picture eventually, actually, after everything, didn't make it into the film because the story I had 
like walked through um, the story and the story took on a line of its own. But I had a very clear idea of what story I wanted to tell. And I spoke to them. He was like, I'm in. Let's do this. But then I I wrote, like, the way I, I write, I basically like build up my entire story, characters and plot out completely in prose before I go into scripting. And so I hadn't done that. And Bumi had worked with us, like had written the first draft of that movie. So, hey, Bumi, we had also worked in the same studio as Bumi for a different story that I worked with, like two other writers. And Bumi was like, hmm, you people are writing and not calling me, Abi. I'm like, no, this is not the right story for you. When I have the right story for you, I'll call you. Mm-hmm. And then this was the right story for Bumi. So, like, Bumi, because I, I, I love writing, collaborating at the writing level. Mm-hmm. Even if I'm, I'm going to write, I'm going to, like, I'm going to think through my story. I'm going to create the structure of the story with like the actual like, pages of it. Um, generally, like I like like writing with people. In fact, like my next feature is the first script I have. Or, actually, I should shut up. Um, Fishboard I wrote alone, but like, um, yeah, that's the first feature I am writing from top to bottom without any collaboration at all. Collaboration, okay. And I'm I'm doing a workshop for it, so that can be called collaboration. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I called Bumi, and Bumi was like, eh, what kind of madness is this? You know, and she saw the story, and we went through, I, the way I, I, I sat down, whiteboard, and, and wrote a map for the story, did a whole thing, connecting the characters, creating loops, and making sure that each loop is closed in terms of the characters. And Bumi thought I was a mad person. First of all, this is Nollywood, there's some things we just don't do. Mm. The scale of this thing was was quite, mm. and for me it's like, but you know what? Let's write the story, and mm. then when it gets to product, so we wrote, we started writing, and then we just get to some places. We just like this guy, <laughs> <laughs> and we still laugh about that. Um, mm. But we 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 knocked out about three thirds of the two thirds of the of the story. Mm. And and like we broke we we came in and we didn't even write on pages and we, we went back to actually breaking like breaking the story again. When we got to the second act, we finished the second act, we got there and I looked up, the loop looks at me and like the story we had is now much bigger than the ending we had. Mm. I was like, Yeah, I agree. So this story deserves a better third act than what we have. Right. And I'm like, I agree. So we basically went to the third act, peeled it, and took it away. Hmm. And it's like, we're in my office, and like, you know what? Let's take a week, uh, weekend off. Uh, it's a Friday evening. Let's take a weekend off and come back with a fresh head and figure out what this third act is. I'm like, I agreed. But remember when I said that my actual talent is something? <laughs> <laughs> When I say, okay, let's take time off, I never do that. I I was actively right there thinking. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I remember we're walking down the stairs and I'm like, Bumi, you know how you're trying to fix a third act of this thing? So yes. Mm-hmm. I was like, I think the solution is right there in front of us. And then it's like, what do you mean? It's like, what's the title of the film? It's like the black book. So there, there, that's that's your solution. Wow. And it's like, what do you mean? I was like, it's a black book. So we created a literal black book. I was like, let's create a literal black book. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so we, like, we ran back upstairs, created this book, created mm-hmm. the thing. I was like, this is what it is. And then the next task then is like retrofitting this entire thing into the premise of the larger story. And we were there till deep in the night doing that. And that's how we didn't take the weekend off. <laughs> we ended up working and so now yeah and now we went went ahead like uh did the first draft i we had to go write uh sorry direct a, a picture so i did the second draft third four, five, six. <laughs> before we right, we did um and then i got into a script workshop with jade jade mm. Isibu. Mm. yeah and she seemed to cool and so we finished this script workshop and the story was kind of ready i had a it's i had a first script workshop it's like a uh, first script before Jenny. and so i remember there's that particular scene 
that require us to view the market and have about 300 extras. Having to do that required for us to meet with maybe 10 different gangs mm. in Lagos Island, bring them all to the table to, to you know, get access to the place that we wanted to get to. I don't understand, like, even like sharing money between area boys, gang leaders, Ish, how yes. hard it is. Yeah. Mm. And there's a the thing, I, it is easy to do that, like individually, one by one, just, but I wanted everybody to be on the table mm. because it's important that everybody knows that everyone is being paid. So you will not mm. hear stories. Mm. So negotiating all of those things, mm. you know, like talking with the police, getting approval for scripts from the Nigerian police, from the army, meeting with the DSS who are like the secret police. Mm. Um, the prison service, the fire service, because we're going to shoot in the northern in in Katuna, and we're going to do practical explosions. Um, and so all the security services had to be like give approval, and it took a year to just manage all of this. And mm. that that person who told me I have no respect for the process was correct, because <laughs> anybody who respects himself should not be putting themselves through that. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we have Black Book to turn <laughs> the film coming out on the 22nd of September. So we are grateful that yes, we do respect <laughs> the process. How feasible was it for you to fund this project? Because you took over a year to, and I, I, I read somewhere that you worked with RMD for um, 13 months. Yeah, 13 months, yes. And then you 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 spent a year on the film, and and then initially it was not um, your decision to direct the film. Correct me if I'm wrong. But then no one was willing to to stay on the project for that long. So how how did you combine all the roles of being a co-writer, producer, director, and literally having your eyes everywhere on the set? I think the short version of it is I remember when I said that. Programming helps you be able to carry different mm -hmm. things in different boxes in the same time. Yeah. Mm. I'm used to working on complex projects. Um, I had that experience in my my other lives, so that is that is a thing. Mm. Um, and I, I had set up like every Tuesday, Tuesday mm. and Friday on sets. I would have in the morning. I, I would write in this coming in. You know, for investors, so that that time means I have time to prepare to be an EP, all right. Mm. And and then after shooting on set, I dedicate um an hour just to walk through with the producer, you know, things and just that rolling rolling grasp on things. Um, for timeline, for context and timeline, we mm. started production pre production a year plus. And then we shot in January from January 2021. And the film is coming out in September 2023. September 2023. Wow. That's how long it's taken. So one year plus. That so it's really started 2020. And so it's been three years, I think. My math is not that good. Yeah, I mean you you mentioned in, in one of the write-ups I saw something about COVID. And COVID happened in 2020. So I'm thinking probably the latter part of 2020 because of the masks and i, I saw some um, the oh yeah yeah i had covid in december mm. nearly died of covid and then mm. <laughs> it was a fun thing where i couldn't walk one of my sisters i couldn't walk my knees was just walking so i couldn't walk and mm. then i could first day i could walk was december 25 christmas day miracle Ding -ding. and then on on the 2nd of january 2021 i'm on a plane to Kaduna for the final Tech Reiki. Wow. Passed out twice <laughs> because I was having bad reactions to the sun. And then I go like, so I, I kind of, I got it figured out. I was like, after you walk for a few, a couple of like about an hour, you like, you feel it coming, you just sit down and everyone will just chill wait for you. Bombastic side eye. It's safe to say that you gave, you gave your all and some more for this particular project. Uh, yeah, I lost a lot of weight, remember, like COVID and then going from there straight to production. It was, it was hard. It, it, sometimes I remember like, it was just your head, just your will, the sheer will to continue because your body, it 
it was hard. It was hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, um, and I do not know why I chose to put myself through that. But like, look, we are happy. We have a family. We're excited. Yes. Like, yes. I'm not sure I can do that again. Uh, <laughs> we can't wait for that. But I'm really <laughs> excited to see um, the Black Book. It's coming out on the 22nd of September on Netflix, exclusively on Netflix, guys. Make sure you watch it only on Netflix. That's important. Like, yes, um, yes. Piracy is is the reason we don't have big film projects out of mm. Hollywood. Mm. And for us, yes, yeah, so we've got to the place where we were pre-producing, we're making budgets and stuff, and we saw the budgets, and the producer looks at me, and was like, we can't do this thing or no. I'm like, we have to try. We have to like, no. We tried all the, the financial engineering we could. It didn't work out. And so I'm like, okay, no problem. So I had my money put together to make this thing, but I've been talking to friends, you know, they, some of them in tech, some of them in, in finance, like about coming in. I had to, I, I built a proper pitch deck and went to those guys. And my guys, like I had to pitch, because almost none of them have invested in film before. Mm. And thankfully for me, like about four of those guys have gone ahead to invest in their films. Right. And one of them is setting like uh two of them are setting up an actual fund for for filmmaking for creative creative uh investment and so they came on board i get part of it because they we've worked together in other my other lives and i'm someone they could trust so yeah they they could invest and and they did i'm so grateful so the thing is like most times filmmakers they talk about the actors they talk about the crew talk about everything but the investors right right and so on the day the trailer dropped i was like nope we're not gonna forget the guys who because every film is made by dreamers and there's no one there's no bigger dreamer than people who put their money where the mouth is or where their dreams are Mm. And that's why I released the list and to thank my investors because they tried. Mm. It was a hard thing to do. We took that big risk. We we didn't have a home for the film. We didn't have a pre-sale. No, we just made the film and the belief was that if we make a film that is world class, is good enough, we'll find a home. Wow. The risk is, are you sure you're going to make the film that you said you will make? And so I had to find myself with like the best people in the industry, you and Kai do what Pat and Ebola allow us to put you. So um Francis came from Kenya as as the gaffer and God he is good. Aruna, my A D Joshua. Joshua was such a soldier. Um you know Haruna the the gaffer like and the, not just like the HOD, some some amazing guy, a guy called Michael, who on my worst day was the guy who lifted me. You know, or the security man, they, I, I got really close to, I don't, I don't think I would have given up, but like it would have taken me two days to come back from where we were. We set mm. up this really expensive explosion scene and it failed. No. So you had to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when things are so hard I and mean, we're shooting for two and a half months and actually three months now because we have that two week COVID suspension. So you're barely going, but like you just keep going because at the end of the day, you're seeing the work you're doing. You know, that's the motivation at the end of the day. Right. And then you get to the end of a day and something like that fell so spectacularly. Yeah. But then I felt like I felt, and then this policeman bullies from Ketuna, he looked at me in a very special way. I, I put prayers up in there for that guy. He he did well, right for me. You know, so it's it's just there's so many components to making a film, and and my investors, I think, they were so amazing because at that point we had run out of budget, and they they came back together and raised more money for the project. Oh, amazing! Without knowing how we're gonna exit. Amazing. So every film is made by dreamers, and my investors were mad dreamers, mm. and the reason we're here smiling. <laughs> yeah. yeah 
It's so true because as a filmmaker, you or you, a director, you, you pitch to people with photos or maybe even um, references to other films. You don't, they don't necessarily see it, but you're the only one who has like the film from beginning to end in your head and they have to buy into it. So many thanks to everyone out there who is investing into the film industry all across Africa. We really appreciate you. And we hope that there's going to be more investors coming in and supporting filmmakers because we really need that that push to make more content that's going to be, you know, appreciated by all of us. Wait. Anything memorable that happened on set um, that you'd like to share with us? <laughs> Is the way you're pulling from <laughs> a whole box, which means so many things happen. <laughs> but please <laughs> <share>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I actually have written about it. I'll send you the link. It's this day at Takwa Bay. Takwa Bay is like a, an island off of Lagos mainland. And to go there, you know, film film equipment are heavy. Film lights, you can't plug them into power sources. Filming in the night, the night scene. Yeah, yeah. And so, so <laughs> it's taken us a week to be able to to manage like like we uh, almost a week to manage the logistics of taking a generator and trucks to Takwa mm. Bay and setting up lighting and for this matte scenes we, we shot the day scenes all right we didn't need so much power but that night scene needed power so we did all of that stuff and we're finally ready on the day off the generator has arrived everything is good we're like we pull off the biggest logistic like in in nollywood history we've done it <laughs> where are the actors tell me tell me the proof it turns out in all of this, production had uh, forgotten to, you know, because we had, because of COVID, things, dates had moved around, had forgotten yes. to update the actors yeah, on the changing dates. And so we did not have half the actors for the scene we were shooting at Taka Bay. Taka Bay is not, you know, driver. It's five minutes from Lagos. You know, mm. you could, okay, no, not five, not 20 minutes. But it's on, the water's closed by 7 p.m. Mm. The waters around there goes closed by 7 p.m. So you, this was about 7 p.m. There's no, there's no way to get the actor. It was, no, it was not fun on the day off, but I don't think about it, how funny that was. Viewers, if you're watching and you'd like to get a better sense of how it all happened and a good laugh as well, though it wasn't funny while it was happening, we'll go ahead in the description box and have a read. But before we end this interview, um, I mean, a lot of people come here and then they speak about how it was difficult, you know, challenges, money, getting people involved or letting people even understand your vision. And even the fact that you got veteran actors like Sam Dede, RMD, Iowa Jai License, Patrick Doyle, and it's, it's, it's jump packed with, with amazing veteran actors. What would you want your audience to take away? from this masterpiece that is coming out on the 22nd of september i think that one of the things that we found in creating the story was that the past never leaves the future behind it's mm. it's linked you know like the past is linked to to the future and and in the present is the future obviously that the present is the future that mm. the past saw you know mm. and and that for us we never really can outgrow our past and and if your past was bad it influences where your future is mm -hmm. and, and in this case the present and so we saw the parallels between the past the story straddles 40 years and and we can see clearly how the past affects the present and even though the black book is a fictional story it does connect the forgotten past with a very ruthless present. And we have tried to to be differential to the authenticity of our culture, of our past, of our presence, and that acknowledging that even when there's silver linings, you can't have a silver lining without a dark cloud. We've tried to tell we've tried to tell an authentic story, authentic mm -hmm. to Nigeria. We've, we've gone we've gone in a long way to try to build the authenticity, whether it be the sets, whether it be the acting, whether it be the entire story itself, we try to be very simple and authentic. 
Um, and I hope that the audience doesn't just see that I appreciate it, but also goes home with the understanding of, of what we are trying to say. I do hope that that passes through. It's a story really for me, it's a story without heroes, mm. because we live in a society that is largely devoid of heroes. We are complex people, complex characters. And for me, I've always thought that in a story, in a land, in a, in a culture without heroes, the silence becomes the enemy. Our silence in, in the face of evil, our silence in the, in the face of corruption, our silence in the face of, you know, things not being done right, is the true enemy of the progress that we seek. If we seek to progress from the past, the flaws of the past, we must learn to not be silenced. When we have difficult decisions to make, we have to find the bravery to make those difficult decisions. Otherwise, silence becomes the enemy of our growth. Amazing words to leave us with. Don't let silence become the enemy of your growth. Speak up. Let's come together. Let's put in the work to make Africa what we want it to be. Um, not just film, film wise, but generally. And um, it's been an amazing conversation with you, Editi. If you all, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate um, the time and all the the fun conversations that we've had around the film. And I honestly cannot wait to watch the film myself. I will definitely do a review after watching. So guys, you're watching now. Twenty second of September is the date. Make sure you save it on Netflix. We're going to be watching it together. And then when we do that, we're going to come back and review the film. You tell me what you think about it. But many, many, many thanks to you. And we hope to see more work from you in the very near future. We're already working on the next. <laughs> the one that is currently in um, in the workshop that we were hoping to get a bit about, but. We'll hopefully get it soon. <laughs> His lips are sealed, guys. But many, many yeah, times. but it's, it, is, it is the best thing I have created so far. I can really... Thank you so much, Aditi. And we are really anticipating the Black Book. Many thanks to you all for watching this interview up to this point. I'm going to insert the um, official trailer for the film so you don't want to miss out on it right after this. And then also, you know, some behind the scenes, the bloopers. <laughs> I'll put that at the end of the video. Many, many thanks. And hopefully we get to meet in person one day soon. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Been terribly in my past. God took away my son to punish me. Ah! I accept. Ah! Ah! You're the father of a dangerous criminal. But accusing my son of what he is not, that I cannot accept. Do you know what you have done? Why do you know so much yet say so little? I mean, who are you? There are some grudges that should be taken to the grave. Forget you do not have full control. Right now, you don't have full control. Now, which one of you? Kill my son. Bye.
right. So, so let me know. You know what? Let me let me let me act like a Muslim um, maker. Let me be a Muslim maker. Uh, and Muslim makers like do in second. <laughs> no, let me improve your video. I can improve your video. Oh, actually. okay, okay. Bye. Oh. Bye. Um. See, that breaks your so it's not like a yes. flat. The flat image you have better image um, exactly yeah there you this, go this is what i attempted to do with with you <laughs> that is actually cool yay um, thank you so much yes um, so if i do this and I do this then then you have better picture yes thank you so much thanks for that thank you thanks for okay all right so please let me okay. know when you're ready i think i'm good um i'm going to all right so i'm starting now Today is no exception. I have with me here Mr. Editi Efyong and he is a filmmaker, tech entrepreneur. You know the whole works. I'm not going to talk too much. Let's hear his bio and get back into the interview. <laughs> okay, um, so I insert the bio. It's a mister, the mister. Like no one calls me that. I don't call me Editi. <laughs> okay. So, no Mr. Editi. No, I was actually like yeah. like in our culture we call each other by name there's no yes. miss. Oh, there is a miss, a Mr. Tunji who's finance because you don't want to like upset him and he doesn't your salary doesn't come. <laughs> that, that that is the joke. She doesn't see that production and the story would not be well done. Done. Mm, mm. Um that, that this probably should be put. Anyway. <laughs> so. Exclusive. Um, one thing I I really loved about the film was that even when there's silver linings, you can't have a silver lining without a dark cloud. And Sorry. and this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've been suffering from a cold. I've been holding it in the whole time. It just had to come out now. Blooper. Uh, <laughs>